our eyes window into your soul? Maybe, but now we know that eyes are window to your health. So how good a job are we doing in peering into this window? With these old slit lamps to scan for your cataracts. Or these devices that cost a quarter million dollars for doing a retinal scan. By the way, check out the user interface. The nurse has to shove my eye. <laughs> and to get glasses, lost in a four-opter. You know, when we meant looking into the window, we didn't really mean the patient has to look through hundreds of windows. Now, this may be a joke, but millions out there are suffering from conditions that have an easy solution. So at MIT Media Lab, we have invented some new solutions. One of them is a device called Netra, which is a snap-on eyepiece that goes on top of a phone. You look through this, there'll be some patterns, use the keyboard to align the patterns, and when they're aligned, you hit calculate, and it gives you data for prescription of your eyeglasses. Your nearsightedness, farsightedness, and astigmatism. And after we spun out this company called iNetra, we have shown that the results are even better than today's autorefractors. And of course, the snap-on eyepiece cost next to nothing, and all the intelligence is built into the software. And as a bonus, we can also scan for your cataracts. So these solutions are possible today because the mobile phones are developing at an amazing pace. But that's just to the front of the eye. What about the back of the eye? Let's think about diabetes and retinopathy. Now, diabetes is an epidemic of the 21st century. 30 million in the US, 300 million worldwide, about 30% will have retinopathy, and about half of them will never see a doctor. And the problems are even worse in developing countries. And it's often about the structure uh, in the blood, um, or macula, or spots. So imagine if you can just have a pair of glasses, you put them on, roll your eyes around them, and at the end of that, you have a beautiful panorama that goes out to 120 degrees, that shows your fovea, your optic disc, your macula, and structures all the way out to periphery. Now, it's not just a dream at MIT Media Lab. We are really passionate about how millions can be reached by passionately, ch passionately challenging the convention of how devices work, especially in developing countries. To show you a live demo, let me invite my student, Everett Lawson, on the stage. And so Everett is wearing uh, our glasses. Um, and if you can turn the lights down, uh, what you'll see, he's wearing a pair of glasses. And I can, already see his, I can already see his macula, his optic disc, the bright spot there. Uh, I can see his macula, the dark spot there. And then as I move my finger, I can see that I can go to the peripheries of his eye structure. And this is a live view of, of, of Everett's eye. Highly portable devices that can be built into a form factor of eyeglasses. And so Everett, if you can just take off your glasses. We're able to build all of that as a prototype uh, in this form factor. Thank you, Everett. Thank you. And now, it's not just about diabetic retinopathy. Imagine you wake up in the morning, brush your teeth, take our Mitra glasses, put them on, whether you're healthy, whether you're disease-prone, or you already are monitoring your disease. The data gets uploaded in the cloud. We can capture it. We can do algorithmic analysis of the structure of your eye, your blood vessels, your blood flow, 
have beautiful baselines every day, and then do a longitudinal analysis and also cross-sectional analysis across populations, across different ethnicities, across different uh, geographical regions, and then, of course, create alerts so that doctors can be in the loop. And really get to the world of predictive analytics. And then the eyes are not just windows into your health, but the eyes are windows into the health of the society. Today's wisdom says eyes are windows to current health, and it's often about monitoring. And that's because systemic conditions often show up in the eye, a manifestation in the retina or cornea and the lens, and in that sense, the eye is considered a lagging indicator. But monitoring is like telling us during a storm that you should stay indoors and be safe. Now, ophthalmologists are already doing better than that. They're often the first line of defense. They're at the frontier, and they often can provide first indications. And they can tell you those gusty winds are actually because of a bad storm. Ophthalmologists will look at your vascular changes, which leads to hypertension, because it affects all blood vessels. Or they can, in developing countries, they can look at AIDS and create a trigger if there's cheese and ketchup structure. Or for rheumatoid arthritis, look at spots on your sclera with joint investigation of your joint pain and other conditions. And when your cholesterol shoots up, they can look at your cornea and notice the white rings and alert you. And for tumors and metastasis, you can look at the blurry edges of the optic disc or accumulation of the fluid, in addition to uh, other conditions like headache um, and, and so on. And the doctors on TV shows are always, of course, smarter than all of us. Your body might be accumulating too much copper. If it is, this should help us see something called Kaiser Flasher rings. Copper-colored circles around your corneas. Wow. I guess we should start treating her for Wilson's. That's what I do. Well, the doctors are smart, but we don't have access. The rest of the world doesn't have access. And the devices the doctors are using are even more complicated. So how can we get around this problem? And instead of just thinking about monitoring or being first indicators and looking at the gusty winds during the storm, imagine on a beautiful sunny day, I can tell you next Thursday, you're going to be hit with a storm. And I think we have a possibility and potential to do that with iMitra. So we're looking for great collaborators we are declaring this initiative of iMitra to see how we can bring various collaborators to solve many complex sub-problems uh, in, this, in this effort. To become a predictor, we can look at vascular structures that can predict strokes and heart attacks. And why would you consider an eye as a predictor as opposed to other biomarkers? Well, it's the only place in the body where you have direct non-invasive access to your blood vessels and nerve fiber layer without cutting yourself open. And body changes slowly, it doesn't change overnight. So clearly the symptoms show, show up and elsewhere. It might be very difficult to do a subjective evaluation of how a, a vessel structure from a single snapshot is changing, but if you have a baseline, we can tell you if your width has changed from 66 micrometers to 67 micrometers. And because the vascular and neurological structures are co-located, and they also provide a very fine detail, the, eye, the eyes really have it. For neurological, uh, there's some great work going on elsewhere to diagnose Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. For neuromuscular conditions, the symmetric behavior of pupil or eyelids uh, could be a future indicator. And for collagen, to detect infections uh, by looking at the sclera. Now, to build this predictor, 
we have to really take care of the blind spots in our understanding. And it's not just about correlation, but it's about causality. What's a lagging indicator and what's a leading indicator? And invention of every device has tremendously changed how we do diagnostics and care. And here we are saying it's not just about the device, but it's also about democratized data. And to make real progress, to build a true predictor, all of us, whether we are patients, doctors, data scientists, policymakers, all of us have to work together and see eye to eye. Thank you.